All right, go. Okay. Opening the case. <laughs> Fingers like this. Pull out the camera. Undo the little lens protector. Open it up. Pull out a battery. They should be charged. Hopefully you guys will leave them charged when you return them. If not, you'll have to charge them. Drop it in. Make sure the little um, connector metals are down. It will, it will probably just not go in there, right? Okay, so now it's got a battery in it. I'm going to do click this thing and carefully screw it on. There we go. Remember that the front of the camera of the two eyes is where the screen is. So there's your first pair of eyes. If you want to stay away from the stitch lines, that would be next to the first pair of eyes. Because usually it stitches okay, but sometimes not so well. Okay, so turning it on is this lowest button right here, and you simply click it once and cross your arms and wait. Because it slowly starts up. Let's see if we can get the, what the screen's doing there. Remember that whatever eye level these eyes are will be the eye level of your audience. So it will be somebody who's this tall right now. Remember also that it will pick up the entire base of the tripod. We can mask this out, but pay attention to what's down there. Um, something like this rug, it's very easy to mask out. If there's all kinds of like different weird stuff happening down here, it gets a lot harder to mask out. It's not impossible. You'll see weird artifacts. When we shot the one that was outside and put a jacket around, um, that got weird. It's going to be a little hard to mask that out. Okay. So let's see the screen now. So you'll see the screen. There's six icons. And in order to shoot, we will click to the second icon, which looks like a video camera. Okay, and then when you shoot, you use the on button as your start stop. And I'll click it, and it will then say ready in just a moment. It takes a moment to kind of get prepared. And there is a process for clearing out the video cards that I will put in another video so that we don't make this one so long. So now it says ready, which means ready to shoot. Click it again to start shooting. The fan turns off for quietness. It blinks to let you know that you are recording. And now I'm going to use the same button to stop recording. This made a very, very short video. And you got 15 minutes before the fan kicks on again, no matter what. OK, when it's done, you want to let it go through its on its off process, which what you do is you click the little menu return button over here, has a little arrow, uh, uh, circular arrow, going back to the main menu. And then you can hold that on button for a while until it gives you a message saying, let go of it. And then it will turn off by itself. It's but it's doing some bookkeeping right now. And it's good to let it do that bookkeeping. If you turn it off too quick, like don't go back to the main menu, um, you could lose the last, your last shot. You could do some funny stuff and it doesn't, doesn't capture all the files. Okay, I'm gonna take it off of here, unscrew it. And so now we need to transfer what we shot onto this computer. So I'm going to take this Ethernet cord, plug it into the camera. Because I have a very short shot, I'm not so concerned about the battery running out. But if you have anything longer, like a few minutes, a good idea to take the adapter and plug in the camera so it doesn't run out of juice while you're transferring, because it may take an hour to transfer all the files. And the, the adapter also works in the charger. 
log into the computer first because it needs the Ethernet connection to log in, right? Otherwise, it won't let you log in. Once you're in, you can disconnect the Ethernet cord in the back of the computer. and plug in this Ethernet cord. Um, probably a good idea to turn this on first. I don't know if it matters. Probably doesn't matter. All right, it's plugged in. So now I've come around here. You let it go through its startup. Okay, can you, can we see the screen? And then you click over to what looks like an icon of an SD card. And you select that and then hit your on button as your select. And it will load the memory is what, it, is what it'll do. And it says loading do not remove any storage device, which I'm not sure why you'd want to remove anyone. And it takes a moment for it to load. Still loading. Okay. Once it's done, it says ready storage device and it says server IP 192.168.1.188. That's the address. So we turn on now the Stitcher, Insta360 Stitcher program, open that up, and then switch over to, it has local and cam files manager, we'll switch over to cam files manager, and we're going to use this method two of connect cam to PC via LAN and import, so we'll click that, and it gives you some instructions, and you hit the big yellow button. And then we got to type in that address. And so it starts out with desktop, so you want to delete that. And then type in two of these slashes that are over the enter key, these funny slashes. Slash, slash. And then you type in that number. 192.168.1.188 slash. And it hopefully will come up It'll actually try to fill in the next part of it for you, which says Pro 2. So you can just go ahead and click on that. And that way it is seeing inside the camera. You will see MSD 1 through 6 plus SD card. Those are the six little cards plus the one main card. You click on what says SD card, which is the big card, the main one in the battery compartment. You click on that one and say select folder down here. And give it a moment to load, and it should have everything that's on your card and start to play. I'm going to select one of these really fast ones here. Let's see, both of these are really short. This one's nine seconds, that's nine seconds, okay. I'll just do that one. Um, so I'm just going to take the one that's really short. And we're not going to mess around with any type of uh, stitching yet. We're just going to get it onto our computer. We want to just get it off this camera onto our computer, and then we'll mess with it. So the only thing we're going to select is you can hit either so the select all and get all of these folders, or just select one of them and say import contents to local drive. Click that, and it asks you where do you want it. Um, I'm going to put mine into... Uh, well, I'll put mine on the desktop for a moment, and then I'll click it over. And it'll say it's about to do it. You hit import. And it will go quickly at first, and then start to slow down when it's getting the big six movies that have to get stitched together. Those take a moment. And in fact, this process right now, depending upon how long your video files are, it could be hours. It could take a couple of hours. If you have, let's say, um, you know, I don't know, a total of eight, nine minutes of video because you've had some shots, a few different shots. Um, I'll make an estimate that it's probably, every 10 minutes probably takes an hour and a half, maybe two hours. 
So that's, pro that's probably the transfer speed. That's conservative. You think that's conservative? You think it takes longer? So maybe it's longer. Okay, it's done. This one's done. So I'll, I'll click OK. And so I just put a folder on my desktop. That's what I got. And I'm going to open that folder to see what I got. It shows that I have got 14 files. The six big ones, which are called origins, six little ones, which are these LRVs, which are supposed to be uh, proxy files ready to go, so you don't have to make proxies. One big preview, and then an instruction document. Um, make sure you have all 14 files in every folder, because sometimes it misses a couple. And if it does, you can lose your shot if you've erased the cards and you didn't get it. So it could be all for nothing. It may have taken you a long time to set up that shot. So make sure you count 14 in every folder. Don't trust it. Okay, so now that I've got that, um, I'm going to switch over to local on here and drag and drop that folder. And now I'll do my stitching. So uh, here's what we'll set for the stitch on this side right here. Content type is going to be stereo, left eye on top. Stitching mode is going to be optical flow. Um, let's see what else we got. I'm just going to go down here. We don't need the flow state stabilization. If it's on, you can turn it off. I'll turn off the hardware decoding. I know that's not going to work, although it's probably going to try and test it anyway. Um, you can, if you want, if you don't want to take the whole movie, you can set the from and to and cut the video. So if you want to get some parts out so you don't have to worry about stitching it to speed things up, you can do that. The resolution, our output, we're going to be in 8K. Output form will be this MP4. H.264 is fine. All this is great. You, don't, you shouldn't have to change anything. You might want to tell it where to go. You might want to name it something better. I'll, I'll call this um, class demo. And I will put it, uh, let's see, right now it wants to go into my test project folder. That's fine. And I'll hit stitch now. If you have a number of these, you use this button to say add to batch list. I'll just do that actually right now. And it doesn't do any stitching, it just adds it to the list of operations it's going to do when you tell it to start going. So you do it with every single folder that you load in, you, set, you make sure everything's set. And then you can stitch it. So after um, you've got everything in there, you hit the start all button and it will stitch. Now I want to do actually one more thing that I, I skipped over. I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. And that is that I'm going to set a reference frame, meaning what it should base all of its stitching on. Like what's the sort of the most usual, typical frame in your movie that it should base the stitching on. So that's this little button right here, set reference frame, set in preview. You'll click it, give it a moment, it'll open up a window. It'll give you some color adjustment if you need it, probably won't. Um, and then if you want, you can move this playhead to a good reference frame, a typical frame that it can kind of use as its um, sort of a template for how it's gonna stitch it all together. If you're inside, like a room that's got lines like in the ceiling, the lines can get distorted unless you hit this little button here saying Zenith Optimization, which it does some magic and it makes all the lines line up, which is pretty cool. Takes a moment. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit um, set as reference frame, save and apply. You don't absolutely have to do this every time, but if you've got some, you know, if it's on some weird frame, it may do some weird stitching trying to be that as the reference frame. Okay, so now I'll hit the um, add to batch list and I'll hit start all. I lost my name. And it should do it fairly quickly. But it shows you status right here with a percentage. It might take a moment for it to start. There, it's starting up. It's at about 5%. 
It's, this is going to take about 45 seconds to stitch, um, and it's only like a five second video. So again, this could take some time on a, on a longer video. And I guess I can turn off the camera now because we've got everything transferred. So while we're waiting for that to happen, I'll turn off the camera. And so I'm going to hold the on button. until it turns off. So it won't give you any message like you can stop holding it or anything. It just, you just gotta hold it until it turns off in this case. Maybe a good idea to put the camera away so it doesn't roll off the table or something. Okay, this is done stitching. I can now turn off the Stitcher program and start working in Premiere. I'm gonna open up Premiere now. What's that? You might need to oh yeah, you're right. Let's see. If, well, it, actually, it may not. It, it, it may already have registered that I've done it, but it, you're right. Uh, we may have to reconnect. Let's see what happens. Let's see. No, it's it, it knows that I've I've already uh, activated the license. So yes, that that's a really good thought. There is that you will have to reconnect your Ethernet because it, it's going to check with the Adobe server and say, can you run Premiere? Do you have the license? And then then you'll have to log into your CatNet if if it's not licensed. Um, I'll, I'll make a new project here. Um, I'll just call it Untitled One or something. And I will, uh, it's already going to my little test project folder, so ready to go for that. I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to import, file import, and I want to get the stitched movie, the one that I just stitched. It's on the desktop in this case. I think it is. Maybe it's not. Where did it put it? I've got one. There's one. 